earwax buildup. <sighs> Not very nice. So earwax is basically um, it's there to keep your ears clean, protected, and to stop dirt from coming in and infecting your ears. Same way your nose, your nostrils have mucus inside them, is to stop uh, dirt, bacteria from getting inside them and making a mess of things. If you have narrow ears or your ears are damaged or if you have a swimmer's ear or an inflammation in your ear, this can also make you more likely to develop a ear wax buildup that can cause a problem. But it's easily treated. What can happen is um, too much ear wax can build in your ear and this can affect your hearing as well as many other symptoms. If you have an earwax buildup, it um, can make you give you a vertigo, where you feel dizzy and nauseous whenever you walk. Your balance will feel slightly off because your ears also play an important role in your height. Yes, your height. I mean your balance. Your balance. Your ears play a role in your balance, believe it or not. And um, so, if you have even a small bit of earwax uh, build up in one of your ears, this can affect your balance. It feels like you're about to fall over, but you're not. Well, actually you are, but you know, I didn't fall over, it happened to me. Hearing loss is one of the main ones where you won't be able to hear properly. Um, everything will sort of feel muffled. You'd be having a conversation with somebody in a quiet room and it's hard to make out what they're saying. And this is because the earwax is building up in your ear and it's blocking external audio from reaching inside your ear. And this can be really frustrating. You'll have um, a ringing or a buzzing in your ear or ears because the earwax is blocking the sound. You might hear like a you know a whooshing noise as well, as if you're at the sea, like or you know, and it, it can be irritating. And your ear might be in pain, an earache, or it'll, you feel like a fullness, like something's in your ear and that's because of the weight of the earwax and your ears are very sensitive and can detect things like that there and it's not particularly nice. Treatment for earwax buildup usually pharmacist GP will give you olive oil and it'll come like this in a wee small bottle and you basically just lie down on one side and you squirt two or three drops into your ear, lie there for 15 minutes and then put cotton bud in your ear and do so the same thing for the other ear if need be. And you may feel like an idiot walking around like cotton buds in your ear, but this is to prevent the oil I think from leaking out and so it actually does soften your wax and allows it to come out on its own. You do that in the morning and then you do it at night. Usually you know earwax will go away on its own because your ears will because your ears clean themselves out. Earwax tends to go away on its own. Uh, it's, it's very rare that you'll have an earwax build up, but I've had it and it was the most frustrating two weeks of my life and it couldn't have came at a better time. So you put the eardrops into your ears and do this for two weeks until your symptoms improve and the wax comes out and you can hear everything again. Now, if that doesn't work, you can, you can also use olive oil for cooking, you can use that. You know, it's the same substance, you know, the same thing, just you're going to get a bigger bottle of it. So there's two effective treatments that your pharmacist, no wait, your GP can provide for you or refer you to at a hospital if your GP doesn't have it or the pharmacy doesn't have these is ear syringe and ear suction. I personally prefer the ear syringe and it's nicer. Um, they're not painful although the ear suction can feel a bit, it can, it can cause a bit of a tiny bit of pain but not an awful lot and it's just you know sucking everything out of your ears and it'd be a bit slight discomfort is what I would say but it only lasts a good second and it's basically over before you know it. So the ear syringe is basically nothing to do with syringes okay they're not gonna stick a needle into your ear the way with that there it's basically they have this small thin tube and they put it into your ear and warm water will come out and the warm water washes out all the earwax and it will get rid of all the earwax. For me, it all come out in clumps, like literally, there's loads which coming out, and I have to do the same for the other ear. The ear suction is kind of like a mini vacuum, where they, again, small tube, put it into your ear, and it'll suck out all of the earwax and any bacteria that's there, it'll just pull it all out, and 
for, you can, that one there took about 10-20 seconds for me. It really depends on how much earwax is in your ear and how, depending on the amount that's in your ear determines how long it'll take them to do it. Usually it's like one to two minutes, you know, really depends, but usually in most circumstances it's like, you know, like 30-40 seconds. If you have a perforated eardrum, holding your eardrum, you, you know, olive oil might not be the best treatment for you. Um, you're best speaking to your pharmacy or your local GP about what steps uh, to take there. That's one thing I probably should have mentioned at the start. Uh, always best to speak to a medical professional first before you treat your own ears. If the olive oil isn't doing much for you, uh, if your symptoms are getting worse and you're losing more of your hearing or you feel more dizzy, then go and speak to your GP or pharmacist and that's whatever they will most likely refer you to get your ears syringed or suctioned. There's no way to prevent earwax buildup the same way you can't prevent the mucus forming in your nose. Uh, the earwax is there to keep your ears clean and safe and mucus is in your nose to keep it clean and safe so that nothing can go in and cause problems. When I had the earwax build up back in 2016 I was in college and they were the worst two weeks you know of that year they really were I could not hear anything I was doing a course media studies and uh, a lot of group work was involved and I had to communicate to my team members in my class and whenever they were asking me for footage or if I knew about how to do this on the program or asking any questions I basically just opened up my Mac here opened up Microsoft Word and I got them to type it out because I could not hear a word they were saying and then I just spoke I had to ask them six or seven times before opening Microsoft Word what they were saying and I can't read either and they didn't know how to do sign language don't blame them but um so whenever I was out in nightclubs and all, um, if somebody wanted to speak to me or had to ask me a question, I just took out my phone, opened up text message, and I got them to type in what it was, and then I would just answer it, type back into my phone and show it to them. That was how I had to communicate because I couldn't hear anything. There were days where the olive oil, you know, helped clear out some the earwax, and I could hear it better, but then it very quickly built the stuff back up again. I went to the GP and basically they looked inside my ears and said, yeah, you've got walls and walls of earwax in there. Um, and she gave me a wee small bottle of um, olive oil to treat it. When really she should have known by looking at that there that the olive oil wouldn't really do all that much. I needed to have my ears syringed there and then. But uh, she was like, no, we'll, we'll try this, we'll try this first. But I didn't know much about earwax build up back then. First time ever happened that there, to my knowledge. And it was a pain. It really was a nuisance. You know, I couldn't communicate with people, couldn't talk to anybody, couldn't have a good time, and I couldn't do my work properly. And it meant that uh, whenever I was, uh, whenever a lecturer was speaking to us, my hearing was so bad, I had to sit on his desk, lean over the gap there, right next to him. And he thought I was taking the mic. He's like, Jimmy, go sit at your de desk, go sit there. And my, old, my whole class literally said, um, sir, he can't hear you, he has a his ears are literally bunged of wax. He cannot hear you. He's not taking the mic. I was a very mischievous, you know, student in college. Yeah. And so basically what I did, if my lecturers needed to speak to me, I just had them send me emails. Because I could still see, I could read everything, you know, and that was much more effective. But those two weeks were a nightmare. It wasn't fun. And it was happening, you know, whenever all my college work had to be submitted before the end of the second semester. And a lot of, you know, the summer was coming. And there's a lot of uh, opportunities, like a uh, Viking event in Portadown. There was um, lots of like, clubs having special events and all. And it came with the time where I could barely talk to anybody because I couldn't hear them. It sounded like, you know, whenever someone was in the same room as me and they were talking to me, you know, if you're if your neighbor's playing loud music and you can hear it but you can't really hear what the lyrics what they're saying but you, you you do know that there's words being spoken but you can't make it out that's what it was like if somebody was trying to talk to me standing next to me you know I could hear their voice but I couldn't understand what they were saying two weeks of that there I was I was fed up you know and I had a, after I got my ears syringed, um, 
you know, it's amazing, you know, you do realise how much you take for granted. You really do. Uh, as soon as I walked out of the health centre, I was able to hear the wind, cars, the river, people walking past, and you, you really do, you're overwhelmed by it. You're like, wow, and you start to appreciate the fact you can hear everything. You know, it's amazing what, you know, how much of a difference that can make. Two weeks of being unable to hear barely anything, and then within two minutes you have your ears cleared out and you hear everything again. It's like, whoa! You know, it, it was a, quite a good experience. Actually, it was, it was nice, it was a huge relief, and I was a lot happier as well. I was able to get all my work done, communicate effectively, go out and enjoy myself and have a good summer. You know, it was, it was an experience and not one I want to have again because it's just a pain. Especially, you know, at the end of the second semester, whenever all the work has to be submitted and I can't communicate and I'm not well enough to, you know, do any filming, photography or essays because I feel like a piece of, you know, rubbish. If you have an Airwax build-up, olive oil usually is a trick. If you're not too sure, speak to your pharmacist or your GP. Get us into Don't leave it. Don't leave it. Because if you do... Uh, the more, the longer you leave it, the more your ears will build up, full of wax, and it'll be more frustrating for you. It's not nice. Uh, you can also go to spec savers. I think you have to pay forty five or thirty five pound or so, and they can rinse your ears for you. You can go to them. Uh, whereas over here, the NHS did it for me, and I didn't have to pay anything. Only thing I would have had to pay for was maybe some more olive oil, which I very quickly ran out after five days whenever the GP gave it to me, and she should have known rightly that it wouldn't be enough. But it's in the past, and I put this out here so that anybody else, if you have earwax build up, follow those steps, what I just, what I just told you. Have a good day, everyone. Bye bye.